Hey YouTube, Do It Yourself Junkie 369 here today and I'm working on my 2008 Audi A4 again. My wife was sitting at a stoplight or a stop sign or something and the car just died. And what I found out was this chain back here called the timing chain or the uh, cam chain, depending on what you're reading, broke. And what it does is it takes rotation from the exhaust cam in supplies rotation to the intake cam so the intake cam won't spin without it and it's kind of weird because on the front up here you have a timing belt which goes from the crankshaft up to the exhaust cam so power comes to here rotates this cam and then you have the variable timing unit back here that adjust based on oil pressure rpms and all that to set up what your intake timing is and that cam is dri driving the chain that connects the exhaust or the VVT to the intake cam. It's a really weird setup. Uh, I think in 2009 they changed it to a dual sprocket up front with a metal drive chain instead of a timing belt. And all I've got to say for German engineering is uh, the Japanese were doing that setup with VVT back in 96 for the SR20 DET. So I don't think they were allowed to call it VVT, but it was something along that lines. And basically it had a dual sprocket up front, timing chain, not a belt, and then the intake side have it had a VVT unit on the intake cam. So, so much for German engineering, huh? Anyway, I had seen a video, several videos on how this was done. And the one I watched, the guy, instead of taking off the VVT and putting the new chain on there, he took out the intake cam. And everybody in the comments was pointing out, oh, you did it wrong, that's not how you're supposed to do it, and had a lot of horrible stuff to say about his video. And there's some bad stuff that he did, and I'll probably cover that in a bit, but I don't think he did it the wrong way. The correct way, they were all saying, is you need a poly drive socket, or poly socket, or something like that, that goes in the screw in the back of the VVT. And then you, Take that off the cam to allow you to put the new chain on and then s install it back making sure you have your timing set correctly. The only thing is they, none of them seem to mention the locking plate you need to hold the cams in place while you're doing this. And that locking plate has two big metal cylinders that basically go down in these grooves in the cams and locks the cams into position. Sort of. Even with that in there, your timing could be off by at least a tooth, according to some reviews. And so the, the socket's about 30 bucks for a good one. The plate is $110. And I only plan on using this thing once, quite honestly. I hope I don't ever have to do this again. So that's a lot of money and tools to do this job correctly. And it wouldn't be such a big deal but it seems like, I already mentioned that the timing can be off even though you have this lock plate installed. On top of that, what you can run into is you put the poly socket on here and you go to loosen this. And this screw doesn't get put in there that tight, but over time it torques itself down tighter and tighter. So if you do get this screw out, you'll need a new screw because it has definitely been stretched and you don't want to reuse it. But anyway, you put the socket in there, you try to go to loosen it, and you're going to need about a two-foot breaker bar, and your socket breaks in half. And you bought a great socket, $30. I'll, I'll put a link for it down in the, the description. So you snap that thing in half. If you snap it in half during correct use even, they won't replace it. The other thing is, it's fairly shallow engagement. It could slip and round the bolt out. When you do that, you have to drill the bolt out. Uh, so there's two things that could happen. Third option, you put that in there, you crank on it, that bolt breaks in half. Now you've got to drill that bolt out. Okay, you found it. Uh, about the fourth thing and best option is it comes out of there no problem. So on the first three options, you're either out of a socket or you have to drill this out. Now to drill this out, you've got to remove these this cam support, I think it's called the cam support. I might have the name wrong. I'd have to look back in the manual to see. 
and pull that cam out and take it to a machine shop and get it drilled out. And if you're going to do all that, you might as well just go, in my mind, it's a lot easier and safer to pull the cam support, remove the intake cam instead to put the chain on there rather than spending 140 bucks just to break this and then having to remove this anyway. So that, that's my thought process behind doing it the incorrect way. So at the point I'm at now, I need to get this timing belt cover off so I can see the timing belt, make sure I get my exhaust cam in the exact top dead center position that it needs to be. And then from there, I'm going to crack this loose, get the intake cam off, put the new chain on, have the timing set correctly, which is uh, to, to do it correctly, I've looked up and even with the plate, people get a, t a tooth off a lot of times and to avoid that, people are saying, oh, from this gold link over, you need 17 to 18 links, which I've marked here. And then that goes over the, the timing mark that's on your intake side. That way, when I put it back together, I should only have to do it once, and then you rotate through twice to check timing, and that gold link should move from the mark on the exhaust cam over to the intake cam mark, if it's timed correctly. If it's not, you have to do it over again. So that's what I'm trying to avoid, is once I put this on there, I don't want to have to pull it back off. Um, although, I might do a test run with it, pull it back off, put the uh, RTV on it, and that's one thing everybody's like, oh, he used RTV on this. It, well, I gotta say, this exact application on the Nissan uses RTV. And it's a specific RTV, but it's still RTV. And I've been making a lot more horsepower, a lot more heat with that engine than this one will probably ever see in its stock condition. And the manual even says to use RTV. So I, I don't know what all the anti-RTV comments on the video were other than like here where the high pressure fuel pump is there's a, a o-ring or a gasket for lack of a better word and instead of replacing that with a new one he smeared rtv all over the place and so here where you're supposed to rtv is okay everywhere else that has gaskets unless the manual says to put rtv there i'm just going strictly with the gasket and this head was leaking oil in just about every imaginable spot. It was leaking up here from the valve cover gasket. It looks like there was some leaks back here with the uh, timing, or not the timing, the uh, cam chain cover, and maybe even a little bit of a leak here on the high pressure fuel pump area. So oil all over the place. So while I've got all this ripped apart, I'm replacing every single gasket just to try to get rid of those leaks. I was going through about a quart of oil every 7,000 miles, which is probably within the limits, but I hate having a, a car that leaks everywhere. It just looks nasty and old when it's really not. So I'll start working on this. Like I said, first step is to get this off and to get my timing on the exhaust cam set up correctly.
So I found my timing mark. It's uh, right here. Mark it needs to line up with is right down there. And if you use a 16 point 19 millimeter socket with the uh, bottom tray removed, you should be able to reach in there and spin it. Only do it counterclockwise, which is the direction I need to go anyway. So, and at this point, it's helpful to have two people, but I should be able to turn a little bit, come up here and look, turn a little bit, come up here and look, and get this lined up perfectly before I take this tray off. That way I don't need to rotate anything while the cam tray, I believe it's cam tray, I've called it cam support earlier. I still haven't looked it up to see which one's right, but I don't want to rotate anything while that's off. And then from there, we'll reposition this intake cam, get the chain on there, and get it put back together. Okay, I've got that lined up as perfect as I'm going to get it anyway. And main thing is, I didn't want to go past the mark. Because if I did, I'd have to sit there and rotate it all the way back around. Which would have been not very fun to do. So now, that I've got that lined up. Somehow I've got some dog hair in there. We're going to take off this cam support and get this intake cam rotated around into the right position and the cam chain attached on there. It's T30 Torx, just like everything else pretty much on the head. And you want to start with these bolts first. Take these out then these, then these, and alternate back and forth. And that's the same pattern that you'll use when you're torquing these down later. And across here it doesn't say which ones to take out first, it just says the whole line comes out first. So I probably do inside and then outside because that's what I'm used to doing. So, I'll continue doing this. I need to turn the camera off for a minute and charge it. And like I said, loosen inside and then outside. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And it'll be torqued back down in the same order. And I'll turn it on before then. Once I get this removed, I'll turn it on while I'm putting the uh, chain back on and show you guys how to get the correct alignment on that and that way you don't really miss anything that important but uh, camera's dead and out of memory for recording so I need to go take it inside real quick okay so I have the uh, cam support off now it's time to put on the timing chain and for that you want to find timing marks on the intake cam it's on the back side of the exhaust cam and if you put the exhaust cam in the right position it should be this tooth right here. So roughly right there. The other one is on the exhaust cam and it's on the front edge and it'll be when it's in the top dead center position it's going to be down here. You, you have the tooth that is almost even with the head here. And then one, two teeth further counterclockwise. And it's going to be a line, not a dot. On the intake cam, it's a dot. So we have our chain. It's got one gold link. After the gold link, you want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then pins 18 and 19. And I went ahead and I drew a line on there with a permanent marker. 
so the gold link goes over the mark on your exhaust cam and your two marked pins here go on either side of the tooth that has the mark on the intake cam and then once you get the cap back on here you should be able to rotate it around and that mark the gold link will then be above the mark on the intake cam as a, a check to make sure you have it installed in there right but first I mind the uh, chain tensioner was really chewed up bad and I need to put a new one in so it goes in this orientation with three bolts and there's no gasket mate material on here <clears throat> okay so on those bolts they get torqued to 88 inch pounds um, which is just above seven and a half or actually it is seven and a half foot pounds and it doesn't specify any specific order on torquing those since there's only three I don't think it really matters um, I'd probably go for the two that are furthest apart first. And I did have a towel covering this and I removed it and I just dropped a bit down into my cylinder. Luckily I was able to get it back. So first tip, keep a towel there. Don't let that happen to you. Second tip would be to use magnetic tools so a bit doesn't just fall out like that. Unfortunately, I don't have that set up for the particular bit that you need. Now that I have that installed, it's time to install the timing chain and the camshaft. Okay, so now that that's in place, next step is to go in and you got to reseal the cam support guide, camshaft support guide. And so that's going to require cleaning all this excess sealant off. And I can tell you, a lot of people on the video were making comments about, oh, you need to use, you can't use RTV. Now your, your uh, oil patches are filled with RP, RTV, congratulations, and all kinds of nasty comments on this guy's video that I'm copying here. Somebody else did this video before me. I just, there was a couple things I didn't like about it. So I'm going back and doing my own. But, I mean, there was stuff that, like he didn't use a torque wrench and didn't tighten stuff down in the right order. Whatever. Uh, but there was a lot of comments about, oh, you shouldn't use RTV, you need to use blank. And I, I don't remember what it was. And uh, all I've got to say is I've used RTV on all of my Nissan motors. In fact, there's a specific type that they recommend using that I use and I'm going to use that on here it's just the I think it's either the black or the gray type I can't remember which I already bought it but I, I took a break from making this video so long that I've forgotten what it is that I bought Let me get that off my Cali converter but basically first I need to get a scraper and clean all this and make sure I don't drop any of it in here but uh, as far as RTV, if you do it right, it won't get in and clog up anything engine-wise. But then my other thought on it is this engine sits at a slight angle and oil likes to collect down here. And whatever this stuff is that Audi it uses, uh, the oil just eats right through it. And eventually you get a huge leak and then there's oil dripping out of this thing 
like I use a quart of oil every oil change. Like in between oil changes, I have to put in an entire quart of oil, sometimes two. And that's just excessive and you can see, well maybe you can't see, but here that's all oil dripping out that leaked out of the seal. And the seal between that and the seal on the, the um, valve cover as well. Both of those leak. And it was leaking here and back here where you have the housing that uh, houses this gear and chain. So if that's what to expect out of that material, I'm fine with using RTV. It might be an improvement. That should be good enough without breaking out a wire brush and scrubbing this thing down. Uh, next, the camshaft support guide gets the same treatment and I'm going to do that in my garage. So I'll probably just hit pause on the video and come back and show you how to put that in. Okay, so I've cleaned this off. I used a scraper to get into this channel and then a wire brush to uh, brush off as much as I could. It's not as clean as I normally like, except for whatever this is, it's stuck on really good. And I don't want to uh, put a wire wheel on here because a wire wheel would likely mess up. It, 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 it would take off material other than just the uh, gasket material. And so the next step is to go in and put gasket maker or RTV in this channel. And also make sure to get the two rings here and the ring around each of the holes for the spark plugs. And it's key to note that these lines right here, all the way down on both sides, are not for gasket material. That's an actual oil channel that you want to leave open. Same thing with this line up here and this one right here. Those are obviously oil channels. And uh, you should have noticed when you're cleaning gasket material out that there wasn't anything in those recesses. In the past I've used gray gasket maker. Uh, I think I've also used copper on a couple areas. Um, this one I'm going to go with the black, ultra black. It's supposed to be really oil resistant. And I think I didn't use this on my oil pan on my 240, my SR20 motor. I used the gray because that's what Nissan actually recommends. On this one though, I'm going with the black. And normally a uh, valve cover gasket or a gasket up here in this area wouldn't need super oil resistance necessarily but I'm a little bit concerned that this motor sits at a slight angle and oil likes to collect on this low side and it eats through or ate through the uh, original material and caused a leak and I don't want that repeated so the whole goal here is to make it better than what it started out as and then as far as putting the gasket on here, you want to definitely get it all in this channel. And you want a fairly small bead that isn't going to squish out really past the edges. And then after this is put on, we'll take it out to the car, we'll set it on there, and we'll just lightly tighten down the screws to compress this material a little bit while it's still wet. And then we'll let it set for 24 hours and really a little bit before that probably but somewhere somewhere in that time frame after it's set up so we we've, we've squeezed it down with just light pressure on the bolt heads and then we won't do our final torque until after it's set up 
and you want it to get just tight enough to uh, squeeze the material and have contact everywhere and be tightened down evenly but I feel like doing that final torque just squeezes it out too much and it will compress a little bit when you put the final torque on it or at least that's the way I've done it and it's been great on everything I've used that technique on so far I haven't had any leaks in fact I've gone had engines that were just horribly dirty messy covered in grime cleaned them off uh, the grime was collecting there because oil was leaking out real slow and then dirt would get attracted to it and after I've done that I haven't had any oil collecting on the engine so it doesn't get dirty or at least not like it was before and I always feel like the key to making these gaskets good is trimming this at the appropriate size so I usually like the whole size on the nozzle to be about that diameter so right at about the second uh, or the end of the first step here Okay, <clears throat> now that we have that gasket material laid down, I'll go run out, throw this on the car, put the bolts in, and I'm just basically tightening the bolts down snug. I'm not putting any real torque onto them. I'm just making sure that this is all sitting flush. And to do that, I'm going to use the same pattern that I'll show you in a little bit for the final torquing of these bolts. Okay, now that the RTV had a chance to set up overnight, it's time to torque these camshaft bearing guide bolts. If that isn't a confusing name. And they get torqued in a specific sequence, which I'll show you in a second, to 71 inch pounds. And I like using these micrometer click stop torque wrenches. And basically, you have a scale here, which in this case is in tens. You go up to the 70 line, and the zeros in line with this center line up the middle. And then to get 71, you just turn it until the one's lined up with that. And then this one has a lock that you can turn to keep it from rotating. And now for the sequence. You want to start here, torque these first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And since we're starting on the inside and working our way out, and it doesn't give a specific pattern across here, I'm going to start inside and then outside on each row. And I don't know if you heard that click. That means it's torqued. And I'm going to come back and check these one more time. And as I suspected, Tightening down all the bolts has caused the ones in the center to come just slightly loose. The first ones I torqued are now slightly looser than the rest of them. So it's not always good enough to go through a pattern once. Sometimes it takes a couple passes through it. And these outside ones are barely moving. But those center ones moved almost a sixteenth of a turn. And because they moved 
that check, I'm going to come back and check one more time. We're now at 71 inch pounds throughout. And it's time for the next step of the torque sequence, which uh, before I do that, we're going to back this torque wrench off. Every time I'm done using it, I back it off just past its lowest reading. That way it removes the tension from that spring and doesn't cause your torque wrench to drift out of calibration near as fast. The next step is after you get that to 71 inch pounds, you want to further tighten the bolts 90 degrees in that same pattern. This is where your pattern is real important because you wouldn't want to accidentally do one of these twice. Or miss one of them. Now next we can put on the valve cover, put on this back cover. I'll probably do the back cover first. That way I know I can reach it. And part of putting those on is to make sure we include the gaskets that go in them. And I'm doing all new gaskets throughout. Not only is it a good idea, because you might have damaged the gasket when removing them in the, off the original covers and everything, off their, once they've been installed once, if you remove them, usually they're a throwaway item. But in this case, the engine was leaking oil everywhere. So I definitely want to use new gaskets to get rid of those leaks that I had. And it seemed to be leaking on every place there was. So, first step is we need to get the gasket I need. And if you guys want, I guess I can put Amazon links for this in case you're doing this job. Put those in the description. And I don't know if it matters which way this gasket goes on. It probably does. Yep. Actually, yeah, there's only one way it can go on. If you flip it around, it won't fit. So we'll just put that on there. And throw this old one in the trash. And before you put this in, remember to pull this pin back here, holding the chain tensioner in its compressed position. Which it seems whoever put this one in bent it a little bit to keep you from accidentally pulling it out. Yep, a little bend on it, keep it from just falling out, probably for shipping. And just in case you're taking this thing apart using the reverse process here, there's uh, seven of these screws around the outside. It always helps, helps to have a mirror to look in there. There's so much plastic in here. I'm trying not to lean anywhere. I don't know if you didn't, if you noticed, 
but I leaned my arm here, didn't think about it, and I broke off the handle for my dipstick. So it's uh, luckily not broken in a way that will leak. The seal's still there, but I'm going to want to get a new one of those before I run the in or well before I do too much driving. I guess running the engine would be safe. So those are 88 inch pounds. I still didn't really see a pattern listed anywhere. So I would just make a basic cross pattern similar to doing a cylinder head. Now that that's done, we can put on the vacuum pump and also reinst correctly reinstall the fuel pump with the new cam follower and seal or gasket that goes right on there. I'm going to clean this real quick. As you can see, it's got a seal here that I have a replacement for. I'm pretty sure I do. And this is just a, a oily mess, so I'm going to go clean that off. The kit right here comes with the vacuum pump seal and a rebuild kit for the vacuum pump. We're just interested in one of them since I'm not rebuilding the whole vacuum pump, and it is this one right here. And in case you forgot, the hose connection goes at about the 1.30, 2 o'clock position. And at this point, I don't think the valve cover would get in the way of anything. And I want to get it in there just to uh, keep stuff from falling in the engine. I don't know if you could hear me taking this off, but it is really brittle. And it was already cracked, which is probably the reason it's leaking oil. So we'll put a new one on that valve cover, which it's going to be obvious which way it goes. And this thing's pretty disgusting, but I'm going to clean it and the rest of the engine once I get it back on there. And if I had to guess, this probably has a similar torque sequence to the cam guide. Uh, I'm definitely going to look that up and look up the torque. Okay, so I looked for the torque spec on this vacuum pump everywhere, 
and I didn't see it in any part of the manual and since it uses the same bolts as everything else so far similar to these bolts which were 88 inch pounds I'm fairly safe in saying that that is torqued to 88 inch pounds as well now it's just a question of getting the torque wrench on there and torquing it okay so before I continue on I'm going to stick the spark plugs in here that way if I drop anything it doesn't <clears throat> go all the way down into the cylinder now these spark plugs are torqued to 22 inch pounds and our uh, 5 inch 5 8 inch socket and I really enjoy using the spark plug sockets for this because they have a rubber grommet in there it grabs hold of the plug so you just stick the plug in there and then you can control it into the uh, threads instead of just dropping it in there and having it mar up the threads or break off an electrode And then the other thing I can do to kind of close everything else off before moving on is to put the new cam follower in and replace the seal on that and put it, place that into its correct position. And this is the new cam follower and it just slides right down into there and then you want to put a new gasket on your fuel pump here it should come with your cam follower kit and then you Place the two together and there is some spring pressure in there that's why that keeps springing back out so we need to add the screws to hold it in place now this hose won't be in the way of doing anything with that so we can place it back into the position that it gets locked into And then we have this wiring loom down here. And it has a bracket that attaches down here. Oh, before we get any further, here's the old cam follower as you can see is wearing down there it's got some wear in there it's not that old uh, what you don't want to do is ignore this thing and let it break on you because then all the broken pieces go into your uh, valve cover and will just destroy your engine so since I had it apart and I didn't know if the original owner had ever replaced it, I went ahead and replaced it. The uh, valve cover also gets the same 88 inch-pounds of torque. And I didn't really see a uh, torque pattern anywhere. So I'm just going to follow the same pattern that I used on the cam, uh, cam support. And that's really loose. Let me go through and tighten these up a little bit more. And I don't know if I said this before, 
but it's 88 inch pounds torque on these. Seems like everything on this car just about is 88 inch pounds. And I'll go back and check these first ones real quick. It's also a good thing to do just to make sure you didn't uh, miss anything. Okay, now that these are installed, they get torqued. And that's 88 inch pounds as well. Now that that's done, and we have the spark plugs in so nothing's going to fall in there, I'm going to start messing with this harness. The bracket down here gets installed to the uh, vacuum pump there. And once we have that done, We need to attach all these points. Actually, I'm going to torque that first in case this wiring harness gets in the way as I attach it. Now that that is torqued back there, we can attach some of this wiring loom up where it needs to be at. And the, there's two holes on a plate on the back side of this, right behind this connection here. There's a flat plate with two holes for connecting the wiring loom. The top hole is for the larger part of the loom. So we'll get that snapped in there. And then the bottom hole is for the wiring harness that runs over to the O2 sensor on the catalytic converter, or just before the catalytic converter here. And then you have this wiring connection that obviously goes there. This connection right here snaps into the top of the vacuum pump. And this, ho this connection goes into the top of the fuel pump. And then this connection is going to come around to the sensor on the end of the fuel pump. But before we connect that, there's a hose here that we'll want to connect in. And we might as well go and connect this hose as well up here. And then there's one more hose that comes out of here and goes around to the intake. And I believe I bought a new one of those because it was is the same type of material as this hose in here, which is kind of a plastic wiring loom type material and it gets brittle over time. And when I removed it, it cracked and broke in half. And I guess I'll have to go look for that and then come back and put it on later in the video. I found the broken piece of it. In the meantime, I will go ahead and make this connection. And start the thing routing wise it goes back around the fuel pump there we go so only thing left out of this wiring loom to connect is the coil packs which we can go ahead and stick those in keep stuff from falling down into that hole and basically the coil packs snap down over and then these 
just slide on pretty much all at the same time. And once those are clicked into place, they get tightened down by two screws. Or held in place by two screws. And they're just uh, screws going into plastic, so don't over tighten them. And those screws are a T20. If there is a torque on them, my torque wrench probably doesn't even go low enough. So just tighten them down snug. And yep. Now, I need to find this hose, connect it, connect the fuel lines back here that were disconnected. Put in the fuel pump pressure relief, which is a Schrader valve. I could have just hit that. Um, I wasn't thinking about it and I took it all the way out. Put the uh, timing belt cover on and then there's an electrical connector down here that I took off so I have better access to the uh, timing cover and then these two hoses need to get put on and I think for those I'm going to have to locate some clamps because they use a special clamp that when I take when I was taking it off this clamp right here I'm pretty sure I'm not able to put that clamp back on, but I didn't see any other way of taking it off than to basically unfold it. So I'm going to get some normal pipe clamps to put on there, and then it'll be ready for test start. So not much worth showing on the video, although this cover on might prove to be fairly interesting oh yeah there's a coolant hose down here that I have disconnected right now well I have it connect just slid on the connection but I actually have it not clamped into place because you need that cooling hose to be out of the way to put this cover on and same for the uh, tensioner. I have the tensioner just sitting in there so I can move it out of the way. And get this cover back in place. And now that the cover is at least in place, I can go ahead and reconnect this coolant hose before I forget. And at least it uses a more uh, standard clamp on it that you can use a pair of needle nose or a vice a set of vice grips on to put it in place. And at the same time, I'm going to reconnect that electrical connector down there and I like these mini vice grips if I can fit them on the clamp for doing these types of clamps there down here because you can lock the vice grips closed which holds the clamp open then you get the clamp right where you need it to be and release it and it seems to be a little less explosive and use a needle nose, especially like if the clamp slips out of the needle nose and then it springs open and seems to be a disaster trying to use those. <clears throat> okay, so last thing that needs to be done is to get the T20 
tensioner back in place, which just dropped to the bottom of the engine right now and is stuck on the main crank. There's three bolts that hold that in, and they are 13 millimeter. Okay, and I don't want to tighten this all the way because I need to pivot everything into place. Next step is to get one of these other bolts in, but it's out of alignment right now. So what I want to do is get the bolt started and then compress the belt to get that in alignment. And to do that, I believe it's a 17 millimeter. Okay, uh, I don't remember what wrench it's supposed to be, but I do know a three quarter inch wrench will work. So we'll take the belt off, and that will allow me to get those bolts in there. And to get this torqued down, and then we'll reinstall the belt. And all I did was I took the belt off the alternator and kind of gently laid it in there so that it wouldn't fall off the rest of the pulleys because it is a real pain in the butt to root this thing with such little space that they have in here. I remember last time I put the belt on, I can't remember why I had it off. It was probably when I replaced the cooling fans on this thing. It took me a good hour, it seemed, to get the belt in there. It just kept falling off. At this point, I'll also go ahead and put the screws in this cover, and we'll torque the cover and that belt tensioner all at the same time. I'm gonna do it with actual water. Okay, so the timing belt cover, just like everything else, is 88 inch pounds. And the belt tensioner is 17 foot-pounds, which that foot-pound torque wrench I was using earlier only goes down to 20. But this one goes up to 200 inch-pounds, so you take foot-pounds times 12, that's 204. Okay, I'll have to go get a different torque branch. It looks like if I want to do that 17 inch pounds one, or 17 foot pounds. Okay, now that those are torqued, what you want to do is take your three quarter inch open ended wrench, and there's a protrusion on that tensioner. And basically you grab a hold of that and turn this thing clockwise and that moves the tensioner out of the way of the belt 
So you can slide that belt back up over the alternator and then you slowly release it until it takes up tension on the belt. Okay, so I've got everything connected. Uh, coolant serviced. The only thing I was waiting on was this last hose. This was the one. It's plastic, kind of like wire loom. And when I pulled it off, it was very brittle and broke. And I showed you that broken piece earlier. And that connects back here. And basically it goes to this uh, valve on the intake cover and over to the intake and that's your uh, vent for your blow-by gases and that's it I have these hoses oil hoses down here connected and I'm going to leave the engine cover off right now so when I start it I have a chance to look for leaks and other than that it's finished and one thing I'd like to note before I attempt to start it here is since you drained all the gas out of the high pressure fuel pump here there's an electric fuel pump back in the tank you might want to turn the ignition on and then off and it'll run for about 30 seconds and then automatically switch off do that a couple times to pressurize the fuel line and get fuel up here to the pump. And it might take a little bit more cranking over than normal to get it started because there's a lack of fuel in that pump. Okay, I don't hear anything out of the ordinary for this engine. It doesn't seem to be misfiring. Uh, that loud leaking noise you're hearing is the injectors firing. And I don't see any leaks anywhere. So I'm going to put the engine cover on it. I always kind of hated putting this thing on. You've got to hook this back here and then get these attached here. And that's a little bit dusty. I guess I'll wash that off later. But that's it. The car's been sitting so, for a while, so I'm going to go take it for a test drive and uh, probably wash it because it's been sitting out. It's quite dusty. And it's got marks from me leaning on it and a bird pooped on it. So I need to go wash it and probably wax it too. It's been almost a year since it's been waxed as far as I can remember. Um, but hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, 
it showed a different way of doing this process. If you need a video on how to take it apart, there's a lot of videos on that. Uh, please hit the like button and think about subscribing. Thanks for watching.